Now, before I talk about next generation firewall, I want to talk about some of the challenges with the traditional firewall. So this is a network topology you looked at a couple of slides ago. Internet connection terminated into an edge router and that edge router has a firewall sitting behind it and then a switch. And then we have the zone outside represented in orange and we have the zone inside represented in green. Now, first thing that happens in a traditional firewall scenario is firewall inspects each IP-based application, which is mapped to a well-known port, and it's a predetermined mapping. In other words, what we have in a traditional firewall scenario, an IP that is mapped to a port, and it's assigned a certain application to it. So for example, a web service, a web server is an application running on a server and it has an IP address, but there's also a port. If it's providing services over HTTP on port 80 or HTTPS over port 443, it's all predetermined mapping. Now hackers know that firewalls filter most well-known ports from sessions initiated from the outside zone to the inside zone. So hackers already know, they're smart enough to know that firewalls are really good at filtering well-known ports. Now what they can do is hackers scan ports to find available ports not currently being blocked by the company's firewall. So in this example here, let's say the firewall that we have in front of us, there may be certain ports that are not blocked on this firewall. So now when hackers on the internet run a scan on this firewall, on the external interface of this firewall, they may uncover that certain ports are not blocked. Well, when they find that out, they get really excited because now they can get creative and launch an attack. And in this case, for example, they could use HTTP with a non-standard port. So HTTP is over port 80, but they may say port 2001, for example. And they may craft a packet that comes to our firewall with that port number and our firewall may get confused and allow that traffic to go through. And this allows the bad guy to break into our network and then they could potentially gain access to hosts inside of our LAN. And once that happens, that makes for a very bad day. What's the solution? Next generation firewall. What's the difference between a traditional firewall versus a next generation firewall? Well, before we talk about that, one thing for you to know is Cisco's latest security portfolio includes next generation firewall and next generation IPS in a product or solution called Firepower. You can buy it in a form of a physical appliance or you can buy it in a form of virtual appliance in AWS or Azure or GCP. Now, one cool thing to notice here is Cisco's next generation firewall can also include next generation IPS. And it's a one box solution. So one thing I did not touch on when I was showing you different topologies is that many, many years ago, back in early and mid 2000s, you had separate firewall. And then when the initial IDS came out and IPS came out, that was another piece of hardware that you had to buy. So you had a firewall and then you had an IPS they were both separate physical devices. Now, over the years, what Cisco has done is Cisco has merged and combined the next generation firewall and the next generation IPS functionality into a single box. And that's what I'm calling a one box solution. Now, the big benefit of that is inherently less hardware is better because that's, you know, you, that means you have a more green footprint plus the biggest advantage is you don't have to use completely separate systems to monitor and manage. You can now use a single platform to be able to see what's going on in our environment and also set up policies using a single pane of glass, if you will. And there's less opportunity for things to miss because you define your policy in a centralized place 
you can bring the firewall and the IPS policies closer together so they are providing a much better quality security. Now, traditional firewall, some of the features that you get, stateful firewall filtering that we talked about, right? It's the ability for a firewall to be able to have a state table and it keeps track of all the incoming and outgoing traffic flows and it looks for anomalous behavior. Anything that deviates those flows, it can kill that traffic. It also provides network address translation or port address translation. So this is something I talked about early on in my course where you have a single I public IP from your provider, but you have multiple hosts on the LAN that may need access to the internet. So think of your home environment. You, you're using a version of NAT called PAT port address translation. Single public IP, multiple internal LAN IPs, but they're private IPs, that's the key. And finally, VPN termination. So firewall can also be a VPN concentrator, meaning you can either have users terminate VPN sessions into the firewall so they can connect to the cor different corporate resources, or you can have two different locations. Two of your branch locations could have a VPN tunnel between them. So the traffic over the internet is secure, completely 100% encrypted and secure. So that's what VPN functionality provides. So these are the features that the traditional, the old school, the legacy firewalls provided. Now, what do we get with the next generation firewall? First, application visibility and control. This is the deep packet inspection engine that is built in to the next generation firewall that actually does deep analysis at layer seven or the application layer with the sole purpose of identifying the application rather than relying on port numbers. Because as you saw earlier, when you have statically defined port numbers, it's easy for the bad guys to get around that and break into your network. And a lot of new applications use dynamic port numbers. So they don't have like static port numbers anymore. So you absolutely need to have this functionality to be able to protect your network. Also, you get things like advanced malware protection or AMP. AMP provides an anti-malware protection at the network level. It's very similar to what antivirus does for you at the host level. AMP does for you at the network level. There's also a version of AMP available for endpoints. It's called AMP for endpoint. In other words, you can actually use AMP on your machines as an antivirus and anti-malware protection. Next generation firewall also provides URL filtering. So now this is a feature that monitors and filters URLs in each web request. So what happens is when you type in www.cisco.com and that request goes to the firewall, it looks at the URL and it says, where is this request going? It's going to cisco.com. So that's a domain. Well, is it a good domain? Is it a bad domain? Well, cisco.com is a reputable website. It's a legitimate website. So by looking at that request, it can determine whether or not it's a legitimate request and it's a good domain name, and then it allows that request to be passed through the firewall. This is what's called URL filtering. Now, the way it happens is Cisco has this technology called Cisco Talos. This is the threat intelligence research team within Cisco. These are world-class network researchers and scientists that are designing the next generation protection capabilities within the Cisco portfolio. And they have this reputation-based system set up where different domains and different email servers and these different systems globally get certain score assigned to them. And that score is based on their reputation. If the reputation is good, score is better. If reputation is bad, score is lower and the next generation firewall can use this function and this feature to filter traffic. So if you're going to a known bad domain, your firewall may kill that 
traffic and it may not render that web page for you because it may potentially be a dangerous web page. Also the next generation IPS. Like I said, a lot of the new next generation firewalls have that functionality built in. So that's another element you can keep in mind. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.